Welcome back, uh, Hananiga, Algebra 1, Section 3.3 .3 today. Uh, we're going to talk about what's known as functional notation. Um, it's just another way of looking at things. A lot of times things will be written in a functional notation model. And so just making sure you understand what a functional notation looks like. So you know that a linear function can be written as y equals mx plus b, but by naming something as a function, you'll write it in this f of x, and I apologize for that, f of x equals mx plus b. This is considered functional notation. f of x is another name for y. If f is a function and x is the domain, then f of x represents the output of the corresponding input of x. You, a lot of times you'll use letters like f or g or h, and how you read that, again, I've said this a couple times, is f of x. You can also read it as the value of f at x, but it is not multiplication. When I have something in functional notation, f and then let's say a number, f of 3, I don't do anything with that. It is merely saying when I put 3 into the function, that is literally what that is saying, and then you'll calculate everything on that side by putting 3 into the function. So evaluate f of x equals negative 4x plus 7 when x is 2. This is how you should write this. f of 2 equals negative 4 times 2 plus 7. Notice that I put 2 in for both x's. Do not touch this side. Keep it as f of 2 and then calculate the other side of the function. So negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, and negative 8 plus 7 is negative 1. So the answer to this question, evaluating f of x when x is equal to 2, when f of 2, then you get negative 1. So this tells me what number I'm putting in and what number I'm getting out. So I put in a 2, and I got a negative 1. So what happens if I put in a negative 2? What do I get out? Well, when I put in negative 2, negative 4 times negative 2 is 8, plus 7, I get out a 15. Now, notice my notation here. f of negative 2 equals 15. What that is telling me, one more time, is when you put negative 2 into the f function, you get 15. So again, it gives you a chance to explain more of what you're actually getting. So f of 2, when I put 2 into the f function, 2 minus 8 is negative 6. The absolute value of negative 6 is 6 plus 3 would be 9. So again, f of 2 equals 9. How about f of negative 2? So f of negative 2, again, not touching that side. Negative 2 minus 8 is negative 10. The absolute value is 10 plus 3 would be 13. So it's a little bit of a notational thing today, more than anything else. So let f of t be the outside temperature of Fahrenheit t hours after 6 a.m. Explain the meaning of each statement. So f of 0 equals 58, meaning if I don't go any temp, at all. I don't, ch excuse me, I don't change at all because it's f of t. So at 6 a.m., it's 58 degrees. So that is the explanation of what's happening here. If you don't change the time at all, then that's what the temp is. So what happens if I did 6? Remember, t is hours. So f of 6. So if I went six hours after 6 a.m., you're talking about noon, then the temp is N degrees. And I know that seems a little bit weird, but F of 3, meaning three hours after 6 a.m. would be 9 a.m. The temp is less than what it would be at nine hours after 6 a.m. So that would be 3 p.m. So the temp at 9 a.m. is less than the temp at 3 p.m. So again, just understanding, plugging numbers in and getting numbers out. For h of x equals 2 thirds x minus 5, find the value of h of x equals negative 7. Now, notice they're giving me h of x. 
They're not asking me when x equals. They're giving me the actual h of x. So what they wanted me to do here is plug negative 7 in for h of x and solve it. So it's kind of looking at everything backwards. It's not asking you to put a number in for x. It's asking you to put a number in for h of x. So add 5. Multiply both sides by 3. And divide by 2. So x is equal to negative 3. So what that is saying is if you put negative 3 in for x, you will get negative 7. So again, find the value of x. So if I was looking at this from an xy chart purpose, I want the x value when the f of x is 7. So I'm looking here. This is the point 3, 7. So what is the value of x when f of x is 7? The value of x would equal 3. Because again, I'm looking at this from the y's perspective, the f of x perspective. So in the next one, I have the point up here, the point 4, 7. So when x is 4, the f of x is 7. Graph f of x equals 2x plus 5. So I'm going to put numbers in for x. And I randomly chose these numbers, 0, 1, 2. You can do negative 1, negative 2. Again, I want a minimum. I believe they say a minimum of 3 to 5 points. Um, I'll have to double check on the actual worksheet, but 3 to 5 points. What this means is I want to know if I plugged 0 in for x, what would I get for f of 0? So 2 times 0 plus 5, I would get 5. So what would f of 1 be? If I plugged 1 in for, f, in for x, what would I get? I'd get 7. 2, I would get 9. Negative 1, 3. Negative 2, 1. So again, I am plugging negative 2 in for the x's and deciding what I would get then for f of negative 2. Graph those points. So I'd have 0, 5, 1, 7, 2, 9, negative 1, 3. And so this will make a linear function. So this functional notation makes that line. Try another one. And again, I'm going to go negative 2 to 2 again. So what this is asking me is if I plug negative 2 in for g, in for the x of the g function, what do I get for g of negative 2? So negative negative 2 would be 2 plus 4 would be 6. So the next one, if I plug negative 1 into the g function, I would get 5. 4. This would be 3 and 2, again, without showing all of my work. So now, graphing those points. Negative 2, 6. Negative 1, 5. 4, 1, 3. And it makes a linear function. So the g of x linear function is shown. Now, I don't use negative 2, I always go in increments, and I know this is going to sound a little confusing. I always go in increments of a fraction. So 4 and 0 and negative 4, if you wanted to do 8 and negative 8. Again, I always look at the denominator and say, what number should I plug in so that I get integers? Anytime you see a denominator, you go in increments of that number. So again, I went by 4s in my graph. So what would h of negative 4 be if I plug negative 4 into the h function? Well, negative 3 fourths times negative 4 is positive 3 minus 1 would be 2. So if I plug 0 into the h function, I would get negative 1. If I plug in negative or plug in four, I would get negative four. If I plug in eight, I would get negative seven. If I plug in negative eight, I would get five. So again, graphing those points now. Negative four, positive two, zero, negative one, 
4, negative 4, 8, uh, negative 7, positive 8, 5. And again, that will make a linear function for the h of x function. The graph shows the number of miles is from the destination after your first flight. So the picture is the first flight. So it looks like if you don't, it starts off at 300 and it looks like the flight took three hours. Next one. On its second flight, the helicopter travels 50 miles further, but it increases its speed by 25 miles an hour. The function f of x equals 350 minus 125x represents the second flight, where f of x is the number of miles the helicopter is from its destination after x hours. Which flight takes less time? So I want to know is when I get to zero, how long will it take this flight to get back to base? So if I solve this, now I'm going to take 350 divided by 125, and you get 2.8 hours. So in the picture, the first flight, that took three hours to get back to zero. In the second one, this one took 2.8 hours to get back to zero. So the second flight was faster than the first flight. Take a minute, pause. All right, welcome back. So now, x is equal to negative 4, x is equal to 0, and x is equal to 3. So again, I want to know, if I plug negative 4 in for x, what value do I get? When I plug negative 4 into the f function, negative 2 times negative 4 is 8, and 8 minus 5 is 3. So plugging in a value for the x's. f of 0. 2 times 0 minus 5, f of 0 is negative 5. And the last one, what happens if I plug 3 in? Whoops, I ran out of space there. Give me one second. Let me try this again. f of 3, 2 times 3 minus 5. So f of 3, when I plug 3 into the x's for the f function, I get 3. Now, this is asking a different question. It's asking what is the value of x? when g of x is negative 1. So again, I am now plugging in negative 1 for g of x and solving it. So those are two different questions that you're going to get on your quiz, two different style of questions you're going to get on your test. So now, subtract 3, multiply by 2, and divide by negative 1. So again, plugging values in for x or plugging a value in for g of x or in for the function and finding the actual x value. Your homework assignment is on the book. If you have any questions, make sure you talk to your teacher and good luck.